Where's John? Oh, right here. <laughs> huh? All right, everybody knows John, right? But I don't know if you know Nick. You might want to reintroduce Nick. Nick Bergman, Assistant Superintendent. Oh, right. So, Youth True Survey. We're going to find out all what it's about. Yeah. And Shell's yeah. intern. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. we've got all kinds of questions here. Yeah. All right. Welcome, guys. So we've been asked to uh, share a survey tool that we use for uh, first students, and so we're going to do that today. Um, it's called the Youth Truth Survey. Uh, it's a tool that I've used since I was a principal in the Seattle School District. So in, in 2007, uh, the Gates Foundation approached the Seattle School District, and the leadership in the district asked me if we wanted to uh, experiment with this new tool that they created because the Gates Foundation at the time was really interested in student survey and perception data and information. And their, you know, the research from their standpoint showed that, um, that's, first of all, student um, survey information correlates really well with what's actually happening in the classroom. Imagine that. Our kids really, truly are the ones that know about the experiences. So they work with the Gates Foundation, uh, work with this uh, uh, program called the Youth Truth, and they came out and uh, we, were, we piloted it. So I used it in, in, uh, at Chief Self International High School for three years. Then I was an executive director in the Highline School District, and I used it there as well. I was supporting and supervising schools, and we used it in, in one of my campuses, small school, three small schools on one campus. Used it for a couple of years there, and now I'm using it here in the Quincy School District. And what I find is a couple of things. One is our students really, truly do know the experience that they're having, and it really is highly correlated to the other things that we, we know. Um, when we look at, we've had the Burke Group come in and do some um, surveys uh, for our focus schools, and uh, if you look at their, their uh, STAR protocol data that we're going in and observing, our own um, uh, observational data that we have, we have our own tool that we do walkthroughs with, and we look for certain things, and the correlation is striking. The kids really, truly know uh, what it is that their experience they're having. Uh, and and, and the, the other thing that I've found is that um, and, and Matt and I and, and Ron were talking about this at the beginning. Um, uh, even though sometimes we see the behaviors of teachers that don't seem to correlate with them believing and wanting kids to succeed, deep down they really do. Our teachers really want to see our kids succeed. Our teachers really want, uh, want to know that what they're providing is working for the kids. And so what we found is when we've done a really nice engagement process around survey data, that our teachers really respond and I've seen that in three different systems as a principal, as an executive director, and now as a principal. And it gets to some of the things we're trying to do uh, in the Quincy School District, and that's change a culture. And I think it's a, it's, for me, it's a, a, a huge uh, leadership lever that we have that, uh, that I think is, is something that we forget about and that we, we don't utilize. And so uh, we're going to share with you today the, some of our data um, kind of share the processing a little bit with it and uh, if there's a little bit of time at the end I don't know how many have laptops but at least we'll point you in a direction where you can play around with it yourself my ulterior motive here I'd love to get a couple of partner districts that might want to come in and do this so that I have comparable data because it's really easy to explain the data away when you're a teacher oh you're just comparing this with that school in New York or that school in Seattle or that school you know how we in Eastern Washington are here uh, we're constantly wanting our own, and, and that's normal. So that's my ulterior motive. Uh, and then, so, but we'll go through this and, and talk to you about how it works. And uh, Nick's going to start off with kind of the process piece. So the map, the the map of the process. Let me try to get away from the mic. We, whoops. We survey our stakeholders, and we just finished up with our parent survey. So there's two different platforms to Youth Truth. There's the student survey platform, which is a fantastic tool, but there's also a really rich um, parent survey tool to this as well. So we gave that K-12 this year, and we just got that data back from Youth Truth in January. So we're engaging with our leaders, our principals, in this process right now. So. In around uh, October, we surveyed all our parents. Um, our principals had had a chance to just finally dig in and review that data. And then we've, we've called on them to explore, to reflect, and then start making some initial plans around that parent data that they just got back. And in addition to just the raw data they get, they get um, anecdotal data as well. So 
and, and same with the youth truth. So you get you get raw numerical data, but you also get the anecdotal data, so the comments, and look for those correlations between the comments and then your numerical data. Um, so explore, plan, and reflect. Um, they've been engaging their leadership teams, which are which are comprised of parents, and with that team, they're developing action plans. And out of that, we're hoping that the stakeholders that we surveyed at the very beginning will see evidence of that change happening. So for me, the nice, pretty survey you get are, are nice and you can use them, but this is the part, the key piece to changing the culture, is what we do with our principals is we do the surveys, we work in our administrative team, we break things down for them, we talk about them, we insist that there's a feedback loop not only to the staff, but then the staff back to the kids. So uh, our, our principals work with our staff, they analyze the data, they look for one success, one strength, and one challenge, and then uh, we insist that through advisory, they go back and talk to the kids about it. And that is the key, is the adults talking to the kids and drilling down a little deeper. So the survey data says this, what do you guys mean uh, there? We give them, the, the principals give them some questions and kind of tee it up nicely for them. And we've had a lot of feedback from our kids that have seen things change that now that when they're taking the survey, they're going, oh, maybe there is something to this. Um, one of the big things we found in the high school is food across the district. The kids are <laughs> yeah. with food. Well, we went in and we talked to our food services people. We did, we, now we have more variety. We have fresher foods. We have uh, laid out differently. And, and the kids see that change. And then that really starts to make them feel like they're empowered and, and that they have a little bit of voice. So. Um, it's the change in the processing piece. So what are, I'm going to go over a little bit of data from one of our schools, and it is the one school that looks, our data looks pretty good. Um, so I purposely put the one school that our data looks pretty good, and I did highlight the, some of the schools where it, we have some bigger challenges. Um, and it's our alternative program, a real small school, um, High Tech High. Got some positive trend lines overall. We've done it longitudinally now. We have uh, two years worth of data. This year we'll have three to look and see how the trajectory is there. You'll see that in a minute. Um, so there's a real feeling of respect in that school. And over a one year period, they cut their bullying rates down in half. Um, so we saw that from the self-reported data from the students, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and some of the priorities for change is the there's room for improvement overall. We're not as high as we need. And college and career readiness, they asked the kids five or six questions around college and career readiness, and that is a little bit low for our school there. And that's something that is uh, part of our whole strategic plan is getting our kids ready to go for that next step. So, um, And this is what it looks like. And I'm going to just give you a, a moment here in, in a partner to, to talk a little bit about this. So this is each of these questions, student engagement, academic rigor, relationships. You can see relevance, relationships, rigor. You can see that through here. And school culture and college and career readiness. We added the college and career readiness piece because that's something that's important to us. And they, they customize that for us. But um, you can see for this school, we're in the 63rd percentile of all the school districts in the nation that have taken this since the hundreds, thousands of, of we're in the 63rd percentile here. 45th percentile here and so on and so forth. Um, you can see from last year to this year, just visually, we're flat, 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 up a little bit. And really, they really encourage their student engagement and academic rigor. And I know from the principal that worked on there, they took this information, they went back to the teachers with it, the teachers process is that they got over it, they got over the shock of it a little bit, and they went back and started talking and working with the kids and ratcheting up their, their classroom instruction with some other things. So. Um, this is, this is a pretty good story with, uh, with seeing some improvement over time. Next year we'll have a third point, so hopefully we'll continue to see these lines up. Go ahead. So this is just that same one. 68% of, of the students uh, agreed or strongly agreed that most adults in the school treat students with respect. 87% um, of parent guardians agree or strongly agree that administrators treat families with respect. So that's really good. 86% of the parents and guardians responded that teachers treat families with respect. And then Nick will take this slide. So around bullying, um, each section has multiple questions within it. So once we get into the data a little bit later, you'll see how um, bullying or climate will be uh, disaggregated into multiple questions. And in February or January of 2015, um, 
16% of the student population said that they um, that they were bullied or harassed. You know, in, in one year they cut that number in half. So it really gives some some your leaders some tangible goals, some raw numbers uh, to to improve their climate. Um, and then also, if you have multiple schools in your district, it's it's nice because then this school compare themselves to our other high school. So I mean, that's for us, that's a huge celebration when our alternative school feels that positive and can compare it to our our. Our, our high school in the district, and then also the, the Youth Truth National Survey data norm. And then same along the lines, this is an area of, of that one of our strategic plans is all students graduate um, prepared for their next step in, in college or life. Um, and this is an area for us where we haven't moved as much as we would have liked. In fact, we dropped um, from 3.49 to 3.45. So and again, that just gives us those questions to dig in a little bit deeper with our leaders um, and our students to, to why, why are they feeling that way? What are some ways that we can, uh, as a district or as a school, help our students um, uh, be more career and college ready? Um, and again, once we get into the data, um, there's a really nice way to segregate it too, is you can look at uh, culture, I'm mean, assuming your language, free and reduced, um, what are some others? You'll get in there and we'll be able to see gender. Five or four special ed. Your five or four special ed. And, yeah. and to really break that data, that perception data apart, which is a really, really nice way to really dial in and, and, and focus um, your, your action. So you can see it. that in 11th grade, we're well at the 25th yes. percentile in terms of how the questions, the students ask, answer questions around my school helps me figure out which career match my interests. My school helped me understand the steps I need in order to have the career I want. So they have five or six questions for each one. And so we have some work to do at the 11th grade at that school. Um, and our 10th graders are feeling a little bit better. And our seniors are feeling ready to go. Yeah. So and that's a good thing that our seniors at that point know which direction they, they, they want to go. But like John said, our juniors yeah. need a little bit additional help. And one thing that we added to this school is there now the whole staff is fully AVID trained. So we're hoping that this data will improve based on the work that they're doing around AVID. So why don't we go ahead and log in and just go sure. through a couple of, a couple of just to show them how it works in terms of the, um, see if it populates my, my uh, my user group. Do you want to have them log in as well? They have um, an opportunity. You can if you want. You can certainly log in using this. Um, but let's go ahead and get it. We'll get it back to them. I can share the PowerPoint with you too, so you have it later. So this is a, a kind of a, a dummy login. So if you want to log in at any time, you can you can do that. Any questions while he's that come to your mind right now? He's trying to get yeah, so, so the the conversation for the engagement part of it does it come with some protocols that since if you're a rookie in the process, you're not a rookie. So, um, if I'm a rookie in the process, I'm not sure what kind of questions to ask or a protocol to go through. Is that part of the the whole process? Yeah. So we uh, the Youth Truth organization. They're a nonprofit. They're in San Francisco, and they work with school districts all over the all over the nation. And you, what I do is I have them uh, Skype in and uh, to our administrative uh, meeting and we go through the survey data we talk about all of these things we they kind of shows them how to do it our, our administrators know how to do it backwards and forwards now so we don't need to do this anymore but the first year and they have uh, processes and protocols and questions to ask uh, and and their their recommendation is you don't try to eat the whole elephant but you choose one success that you really celebrate and tell people hey great job and you choose at least once one challenge we ask that they put that challenge in their SIP planning and, and think about how we're going to uh, address that and, and we try to make it something that's just not food that's more around academics and rigor and, and or relationships and that has to tie into our strategic plan as well. How are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. About 15. Okay. Good. Oh, we'll have plenty of time then. Did you do the the dummy login or the mm -hmm. mine? Okay, that's fine. I think we'll, that's just about what we'll have time for today. John, how many questions are on the survey? Um, so the parent survey has too many questions. 
Uh, it has, uh, I think it had like 47 questions, and that's some of the feedbacks. The first year of Youth Truth done that, uh, it was just too long to get at conferences. But we got a, almost 150 in our high school to do it, so we had a nice end size. Um, I think it's pretty 40, 40 or 50 students, or questions for students. Um, for students, it's not a big deal. They put them in front of a Chromebook in an advisory period, period, and they rotate them through, uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, the parent survey uh, got to be a little bit much for our parents. But it's customizable? You can reduce that? Well, you can add. We, we chose to add the career, uh, the student, uh, the career part of it, and so there's two customizable pieces. So you could just not do those customizable pieces, but you're going to do student engagement, academic rigor, academic rigor, relationships uh, with teachers and peers. Uh, there so there's no way to reduce the parent number of questions. What I'm saying, though. Well, this is the first year they've done it, and so um, that's going to be our feedback to them. And you can, I think. Um, <coughs> I, I just don't know because we haven't um, given, given them any feedback on it. So, Nick, what's your grade span that you're using this for We're students? using this for um, sixth grade up through 12 okay. for our students. And uh, the, the elementary one, start, they start at six. The sixth, seventh, and the sixth and seventh grade one is different than the junior and the high school one. So, they, 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 the questions change based on the grade level of the kids and the, the maturity level of the kids. So. But the parent survey was a K-12 survey. So why don't we go into, so student engagement looks pretty good there, 63rd percentile for us. Um, so why don't we go into one that's a little bit more challenged, the academic rigor one, and just uh, go in and see what it give you a chance to um, <coughs> see how it breaks down for an individual one there. So you've got, um, describes the degree which students feel they are challenged by their coursework and teachers. So there's four or five questions around challenge. Uh, my teachers, I have to work hard for my grade, uh, things like that that they ask. And they give you a composite score like this. And, and uh, for us, it's the 45th percentile. And this is what our kids are reporting. Um, can we get to the, and, and are you going to do it by free and reduced? That's fine. So this is the difference. This is an interesting um, so our free and reduced lunch student, eligible lunch students report at the 77th percentile compared to their peers uh, according to this question. So that's an interesting thing. Our free and reduced lunch kids are reporting that they're being challenged, but our other kids aren't. And I don't know how big that end size is for those non-free and reduced. We're about a 90% free and reduced lunch. So in the two years you've done this, do you notice the difference between the senior class, junior class, and sophomore class? in their responses because I'm thinking is there a way to, to, to mitigate against you know if you have a, a group of kids that are real positive optimistic as a group they may their responses may be more positive than and so you're not actually certain cohorts of students take on certain characteristics and have certain personalities yes, yeah. and mm -hmm. some are higher functioning than others um, you have the comparative data from the whole versus the the part and you can compare um, the overall trend data is they don't segregate. They don't segregate out the trend data. That's something that you would have to track on your own. Yeah. As far as when you dissect the data. But that's feedback you can give yeah. the group to say, hey, yeah. this would be helpful yeah. to us. So that's that. Um, what else, Nick? Is there anything else we want to show here, and then we can move on on our PowerPoint, so we can. Yeah, get, let's hit the power, the parent piece, real quick. Hey, John. Yes. Just a technical question. Does uh, this program, would it talk to like Skyward and stuff so you don't have to input all the uh, demographic data or is this something that you'd have to do? I don't, I didn't do any of this. It, it, it does, it comes. It, it sucks out just, of our, our system. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, this just, yeah, they, they set it up through the, the um, my secretary actually worked with them and got all the things so popular. Because it's part of the data carousel and yeah. Skyward. And but they, yeah, this doesn't connect, this hasn't connected with Skyward at all. They, pro they provide the reports and everything for us, so. Um, we don't put the reports together. These just come like they are. Um, so, and again, around school culture, um, this I, I find the parent one really interesting. Just the difference of, of our of our parents' perceptions, and that can really, again, it, it takes you you can you know live at the thirty thousand foot level, but this the, the way the survey with the different um, demographics, you can really get down to the granular level and do some real meaningful action. Um, and for us, especially Quincy, language at home is, is a, you know, we have a lot of Spanish speakers in our district. And there's a clear uh, difference the way our English-speaking parents 
respond to questions around school culture that are Spanish speaking, um, are, are English speaking, are almost in the 70th percentile um, in their responses around school culture. Where are Spanish speaking, they're about the 15th percentile. So, you know, that, that can lead to some, some assumptions and, and some reasons as to why, but then also drill down and start talking to parents and, and game planning uh, to, to understand our, why our, our parents are feeling this way around school culture. I think the biggest, the biggest, uh, it, most interesting finding for me in this is that uh, on one of our schools, our Spanish-speaking uh, families are really happy. In another school, they're really not, they're dissatisfied. Um, and what, in secondary in particular, our free and reduced lunch and our Spanish-speaking families are really satisfied but it's our, our white middle class families that are less satisfied. And so that was something that we have to pay attention to. We have to find out, we have to learn why is that? And what is it about what we're doing or not doing that's, that's really um, impacting that perception around our families? We have to go into that one uh, junior high or the one elementary school where they're not happy and find out what's going on there. But we're real proud of our teacher at the elementary. She said, well, I have a problem. And she attacks it head on. She goes and talks to her staff about it. She gives feedback to her to her parents about it. And she's having conversations now with her Spanish-speaking families about what is it we're not doing well and finding out some really good information and making some positive changes in the culture of the school. So, so is the survey in language that's appropriate for the family? They do it in Spanish and English, mm -hmm. which... And the colloquialisms and idioms are taken out of it. So that I mean, yeah, we, we didn't have, we're having any reportings with, reportings with our parents um, having difficulties taking the survey. We did have translators available on hand yeah. if, if they did need additional assistance with the survey. Some of uh, our limited English, English Spanish. Some of our limited English families also um, are not highly literate, so yes. we'd have our we have translators uh, on yeah, yeah. our peer educators that are translators sitting there and, and doing okay. it with them yeah. during, at, the, at open houses because so. we want clean data. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thanks. Yes. When it comes to parents, you're dealing with just those people that participate, or how do you get them to We bully them into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We bully them into it at our conferences. We have tables set up. captured audience at conferences. We, uh, we tell our principals to just grab them while they're sitting if they have some extra time and make them sit, and they grumble and they do it, and we get good feedback. And um, the key for us with our parents is a feedback loop to them somehow. We haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do that feedback loop. But if we start telling our parents, we learned this about what was ha what's happening in the schools, and we're taking these actions, thank you for your participation, or maybe have a little sheet saying this is uh, the purpose of this next year, is here's what we've learned, here's what we've done. Your, we really do take your input um, to heart. So why don't we get Ish, that? Yeah, so how, how do you merge this with like your school improvement plan and or your strategic plan? How does that all Yeah, work? so I have, I actually was going to start with my strategic plan here and um, I, I can pass these out to you, but uh, time was, I was a little worried about time, but we, everything that we do, this is our one pager for our strategic plan. And this fits in a lot of these categories. It fits in effective teaching because we're, uh, we have another data set for rigor, relationships, relevance, and the things we're trying to do. It fits into partnerships with parents. It fits into access and opportunity and equity. We're breaking it down by, we're breaking things down by, uh, by language group, by poverty levels, um, and then continuous renewal, trying to constantly get better. So these are our foundational strategies for our strategic plan. These are our targeted strategies. Um, our targeted strategies, we have, uh, we have action plans for each of those from, and I have, I call them uh, shepherds, they're my shepherds that are leading this, we have leads for this. So, um, for example, we have a targeted strategy for parent partnerships, and we'll like, take this, this will be, we'll take some actions we'll, in our parent partnership strategic plan group. We'll look at the data, we'll review it, we'll come up with some next steps, we'll work with our administrators, and we'll incorporate that into the plan. So that's how it, it matches with our strategic plan. Uh, with our SIPs, we ask our principals to take one challenge from the data and make sure they're incorporating some of it into the, into the SIP. And again, we try not to make it about food, but about something right. that's a little bit higher, higher level. And, and we push them during our goal setting process. To and all but one of our schools are Title I school. So with the parent engagement piece being a required component of a Title I SIP plan, 
uh, you know, this this data, especially the parent survey data, would really help craft that parent engagement plan. You know, in, in kind of a data driven way, rather than kind of getting away from you know popcorn Fridays or your volunteers, but this kind of drilling down a little bit deeper and then connecting it to our strategic plan to make that 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 parent engagement plan a little bit meatier than they have been in the past. Our, our board loves this. Our board really, really likes it, both the student survey and the parent survey, because that's one of the things that's challenging. And I sat down with my two board leads yesterday, and I, they, they want to do all these great things. And I said, well, first of all, we're going to have to put more on the consent agenda, which I think we'll agree to now, which I think was a big coup on our part. But I said, we're really going to start. You really have to. Yeah, that was Garn's uh, really uh, good feedback to us. We're like, oh, yeah, that would make sense. So uh, we put more on the consent agenda so we can have more time to do some of these things. But it's a real tangible way that you can report out to your board around the actions that you're doing related to perception data for both your parents and your students. Uh, they had done uh, parent surveys that were kind of homemade parent surveys, but they just don't have the reporting features and they just don't have the scientific uh, research-based backing that something like this has. So uh, we've used it really effectively that way. Uh, we've, we're, we're, you know, the, 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 we're, the challenge is you've got to make sure you kind of keep this stuff out of the media a little bit, but we've been able to, to do that effectively too. Yeah. But what's your cost for it? About three or four bucks a kid. Uh, and so um, it ends up being, we do probably half our kids, maybe not, maybe about half. So it's probably uh, a three or $4,000 bill for us uh, to do the whole thing. The parent surveys are, are I think, uh, I can't remember what they paid on those, about 500 bucks a school maybe. Um, Have they deployed electronically to the parents? Yeah, yeah. We, we put it out on our Facebook page. We put it out on our uh, website. We email it, uh, out to all parents. email it out to parents. We send it courier pigeon with a little note that says uh, <laughs> survey. We drop them down on people's houses with little parachutes. <laughs> Are you using federal dollars, special for Title One, to do this? You know, we're just using our. Um, so we could. I suppose we could, but we're just using our BDA dollars to do this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we will next year, Carl. Yeah, another good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got that parent yeah. Yeah. indicator for parent involvement. Yeah. And, and yeah. You do it at parent yeah. conferences. That's yeah. you know, we've done the same thing. Yeah. Nick, can you share a little bit from the principal's perspective? Because I know you, I assume you were in the principal's role last year when, uh, when this was first done. What is the sense of your of your principal colleagues? Because I, uh, whenever you start talking about culture, there's a and surveys, there's a natural yeah. tendency of is it going to be part of my evaluation or is it truly just part of my SIP plan or how did how did how did you guys navigate that that messaging and you know we especially around um, the parent survey it was was brand new this year and some of the principals were a little um, nervous about the results at first but I think there's as John John mentioned, you can always find one celebration. You know, you start with the positive, and, and all of our buildings have some really good things to celebrate. But there's also some challenges and some opportunities within that data. And, and once we kind of get through the processing and, and the, I don't want to say excuse making, but once we lead them to the ownership of the data, I was really impressed with our leadership team really dug in, and uh, they're they're really committed to making some changes around the data. But you know, we had to have you know an opportunity to to really have some open frank conversations um, with them individually, and then together as a leadership team, and then come to terms with with some some you know uh, where are we going to land on those those opportunities to make some changes. But but yeah, it was it was. It was well received. They really embraced it. I'm they did. Our leaders have done a nice job with this, and, and we've we've been on it. We've made sure it was. We have we have check-ins, and we uh, we make sure it's it's on our leadership agendas, and we give them time in our leadership meetings to do some processing and some some uh, thinking together with the partners, so they can process it a little bit, and that helps. It's not just throwing at them instead, no. and and, and, you, and here's what you go do something with it. It's you have. And the, the, the organization has really good um, processes and protocols and support to be able to help you through it. So. How about the next level down, John? Teachers supportive and, and uh, buying in? You know, um, that's, that is a good question. I, I, I think that uh, the first year was a real shock to them. I think they were a little bit, some of them were actually a little pissed off about what they were hearing from the kids. Um, but once they've seen it a couple of times and once they see the research behind it and once they they start to get over that a little bit. I don't think they love it necessarily, um, 
but uh, they see they certainly do respond like this, and then they've been really good about going back and talking to the kids about it for the most part. Um, this I be, haven't had a, a single issue in a. It's never come up in a um, in a labor management meeting. Um, so, and this will be year three for us doing the, the student survey. So the kids <laughs> expect it, Great. and the kids really want to use this as a as an opportunity to leverage. Um, their influence and their voice on um, the system, which which is phenomenally phenomenally powerful, um, if we listen responsibly. I think that's it for us. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. Nice job.